Revolver Underground. What's going on, guys? It's Z-Rock doing another Skype interview, and I am here with Omar Akram. What's going on, man? Hey, man. How are you? You know, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good. I think I'm good. Good. Good yeah. to hear that, man. Yeah. Uh, so you, you're, you're probably one of the most prestigious people that I have actually had to had the opportunity to interview. And a lot of people may not know this. There's about, not a lot, a few people may know this. I'm messing that up. There's a few people out there that, uh, that may not know this. You, my friend, are a 2013 Grammy award winner. Yes. How, how, wow. Um, this, this whole experience, I, I went to the 2012 Grammys and uh, did a whole bunch of, of interviews there, but being on your side of the Grammy Awards, the, the the biggest night in music, what what's going on here? What what was going through your head? Well, I mean, first of all, I got to tell you, the first uh, when I was first nominated, that in itself, I thought, wow, <laughs> I'll always be a Grammy nominee. I didn't even think about winning the Grammy Awards. Right. I was. You know, and so I was riding that high, man, for a while. And then the day of, you know, I, at first I was like, I really don't want to go to this thing because I know I'm not going to win and I'm going to be really disappointed. But then uh, then, then I thought, okay, let's, uh, let's make it happen. Let's go over and see what happens. And um, it was a great, uh, you, you know, it was a great show, obviously. Um where my category is awarded is at the Nokia Theater, not oh, at the Staples Center. Right, right. Okay. Uh, for those of you guys that don't really know that, it's uh, about 78 to about or 80 categories are awarded before the main uh, telecast that people see, you know, uh, in the evening. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, my category was number 30 and we were just kind of waiting it out. And uh, when my category came and they called my name as, as the winner, I, I got to tell you, I, I don't really remember what happened. <laughs> I just stood up and started jumping up and down. <laughs> I had my family. My poor wife was like, oh, my. I mean, she was just crying. And, you know, and um, it was just an amazing, amazing feeling. And I just ran on, you know, I just ran to the stage because they only, you know, beforehand they tell you, please, when they call your name, you got to just run, come over here as quick as you can and, and get your award. So that's exactly what I did. Wow. And uh, it was it was awesome. You know, I mean, just uh, your whole musical career flashes in front of you, <laughs> in front of your eyes. It's like, oh. man, I can't believe. Steve, you know, I used to be in my bedroom playing the piano. Now I'm in front of all these people accepting a Grammy Award. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, that I, I, I can only imagine uh, just, I mean, that that's the, the most prestigious award that you can get as a musician. Um, you know, and it's just one of those things where I, I, I can't, I can't imagine. But this, this night, I mean, this was an even bigger night too, because not only did you, uh, did you win a Grammy, but you're also, you're also, um, a number one. You are the first Afghan American in the history of the Grammy Awards to to receive this honor. How how, how what was the feeling behind this? Well, I, I got to tell you that was that was really really incredible because uh, being like you said the first Afghan American to win um, a Grammy that in itself is incredible. At at first, you know, as I'm standing there, and obviously my family was very proud of me, and and then. You know, but when I when when the word got out that uh, you know uh, in Afghanistan that I'm the first Afghan American to win a Grammy, I mean I became literally overnight front page news, <laughs> and uh, and from there, I guess a lot of the uh, media outlets throughout the world, like BBC, Voice of America. You know, all around the world, just kind of picked it up and became a, a really a big news around the world. So I, I mean, I knew the Grammy was big, but then, then, then you have this on top of it. It's just, uh, it just, it just been phenomenal for me. You know, wow. uh, it's been amazing. Great. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, there's there. That's that's a lot to take in in one night. I mean, I, you know, I'm assuming that you're still kind of just having a hard time embracing that this this awesomeness if you will yes Man. yes it's, it's just uh, it's just incredible it's yeah. it's hard to it's hard to even explain to you 
but uh, it's just been it's just been amazing, and I'm I'm just really proud that this this happened. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about where you where you find um, inspiration. Well, I mean, you know, I think uh, it's interesting because my music. Uh, I mean, let me tell you a little bit about my background. You know, I was born in New York City. My father used to work for United Nations in New York, and then we traveled to different countries. We went to Czech Republic. I've lived in Cuba, Havana, and to you know France, uh, other countries, and so. A lot of my music is influenced by the different cultures that I that I've came across, and uh, so a lot of it, uh, you know, I mean, inspiration comes in in different in different ways, as you know. I mean, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when I was working on Echoes of Love, um, you know, I got I got married, so a lot of it, uh, a lot of the inspiration came from that, mm-hmm. and then I had my first child. Uh, you know and uh, while I'm still working on the same album Mm -hmm. and so some inspirations came from from that from having my first uh, daughter and uh, so it's just uh, you know it's just I mean it's hard to really answer exactly where the inspiration comes from but as an artist you you get it from any, you can get it from anywhere, from the places you've traveled to or the people that inspire you or places, uh, and the list goes on. Sure, sure. Uh, has, there, has there ever been a time in your life where you thought that, you know, may, maybe maybe being a musician, an artist, isn't quite what I, what I want to do? Has there ever been a time that you've thought that? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, as an artist, you always go through that, uh, through the ups and downs. I mean, while I was working on my last album, Echoes of Love, I mean, there, there are times that you're discouraged. You know, things are not going the way you wanted them to go. And, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely had those moments. But, uh, but then you're inspired and you want to be in the studio and just keep going and, uh, and here's the result. So, sure, sure. Uh, got to keep it going. And how does this how does this Grammy experience the you know the winning the award and just being the first Afghan American how does this change things um, you know for uh, Afghan American artists and, and singers and songwriters and all these people how does this how does this uh, come together? Well, I think for me it's just been like I said it's been an amazing experience for me. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the good news is now people actually return my calls. <laughs> 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 a few weeks ago, you know, that was a different story. Right. But, uh, but now, you know, now it's uh, no. I mean, in all seriousness, I think, um, I think, you know, Afghanistan. You know, I mean, people are going through tremendous hardship. Sure. You know, and 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 if you put people in the right environment and you nurture them, you know, great things can happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, uh, and, and, and the interesting thing about also being the first Afghan American, I don't know how much you know about the history in Afghanistan, but Afghanistan is made of different tribes and different ethnicities. They're all together. And that's one of the reasons that there's so much fighting going on within, within the people. But this award has actually united the whole country. And so I, I feel really, really good about that because I mean I'm getting I'm getting emails and you know responses from everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so this has been a really uh, a really great thing for me, my family, and and that country. I think. Yeah, that's I mean the the whole thing. I'm just you know I was reading your bio and just everything about your situation from you know from start to finish has just it's just seemed uh, it seems like you you've worked up to getting a Grammy. That's the whole. You know, it seems like that's the whole thing. It, it just kind of topped off the cake that, you know, it was a frosting on the cake that you now have all this. You've done all this hard work to to end up getting to this point. And, um, you know, now that you've you've received a Grammy, I mean, obviously you want to go for another one. But is there anything is there anything else? So what, what are your dreams and goals now? Well, I I think for me the the biggest thing is to be able to take my music out there to present it to as many people as I can. You know, and that means doing uh, doing concerts, uh, a lot of concerts, 
And I know I'm already invited to go to different countries, like to Indonesia, I'm going to Tunisia this summer, and I'm going to other countries. And I think that's one of my big goals, to be able to take my music out there and present it to as many people as I can. I'm also working on some new tracks. Um, there's going to be an album coming out uh, sometimes late in August, beginning of September of this year, which is sort of the best of uh, taken, you know, tracks taken from my first four albums. And then I'm coming up with another, another five or six tracks that will be released uh, end of August. Okay. Okay. Wow. wow. So you, uh, now when you do all this stuff, you're, you're, you're writing, you're sitting down, you're writing, but you're not, you're not only writing, um, you know, feelings and, and, and things of that nature, but you can also write, uh, I just, I, I don't know how to explain this, but you write, um, in a, an emotion, I guess, is that, do you write more of an emotion or just to, to write? Well, yeah, I'm, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I think, um, I mean, yeah, you do write an emotion. You, you know, I, I have a feeling before I sit down, is this going to be a, slow tempo song it's going to be a happier song it's going to be you know so i have a preconceived idea when i sit down behind the piano okay and then sometimes i i could write down some chords on a piece of paper you know not in front of a piano sure and then just go in there and start and start playing and as, as you know it, it changes quite a bit when mm. you're sitting in front of the piano as you're writing music so mm -hmm. It kind of it starts with one idea and it and it takes form. At that point, I have really no control over where it's going to go. Right. I come in with a preconceived idea, but sometimes you know it just inspiration takes you where it takes you. You know. Sure. So um, yeah. So what is the what does the best show experience look like for you? Either either you've done it in the past or you want to want to do it. What is the best show experience? Well, I think for me, uh, be to be able to play with a big uh, orchestra, I mean, a lot of the music, I mean, not a lot of it, but some of the music that I've done uh, requires more musicians, you know, a string section or a horn section or, you know, maybe a symphony. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would be a dream come true to have a symphony, for instance, wow. uh, playing with me and then with my band. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have my core band that I play with and then um, and then on top of that, that having a symphony I think would be really great sure yeah that'd be actually that'd be amazing um, you uh, I, I'm, I'm used to I'm used to talking about um, you know like uh, band shows like rock shows and things like that so I'm, I'm trying to switch gears and go over into um, you know a different side of life that I I've got a little bit of, of you know uh, involvement in but you know, when you, when you, go, obviously it's a little bit different than a rock show. So kind of explain to me how, how the night begins and, and what to expect in, in one of your shows. Well, I, th I mean, it's not that different from a rock show. I mean, you know, basically it's, it is, you know, we do have a band. Mm -hmm. We do have, uh, you know, the one thing we do in, in our shows, we have perhaps longer intros, you know, where, you know, you have different instruments coming in and, 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 and just kind of starting and then kind of going into the song. But, um, but it becomes, it becomes an experience, you know, I mean, I think I want, when people come to my show, I want them to, you know, ex go away with this amazing experience, you know, feeling the music. And I mean, I, I don't, I don't really think it's uh, different than any rock show that you're talking about. I mean, um, uh, it's, uh, it's basically basically the same thing, but um, you know we go straight for about an hour and a half. I mean, uh, you know, I have a I perform at the House of Blues, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, we just uh, no breaks. We just go on for about an hour and a half, and we give people a, a, a great experience. Wow, you know that's so. that's pretty good. I mean, an hour and a half is a uh, it's a really good show. Um, sure. What is, uh, I guess, what's the what's the best place or the best venue that you performed in so far? Well, I really, you know, amazingly enough, I love the House of Blues mm -hmm. because it's such a small but it's an intimate venue mm -hmm. where you can actually, you know, I gotta, I gotta tell you, <laughs> uh, I think it was last time about a couple months ago when I was performing at the House of Blues, uh, 
it's in the foundation room, which is a small room on the yes, third floor. I like that room. And we have so many people that came in that I, they actually have to turn people away. <sighs> and the people that were inside, they actually sat on the floor. So, so people in the back could see because, as you know, there are really no seating. I mean, they have the bar area. If you remember, they have the couches and stuff near the, the fireplace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we had, I mean, it was, it was amazing because we're, we're, you know, on the floor level. And I see all these people kind of kneeling and sitting down in front of me, you know, and listening to music. And there's, I mean, you could. I mean, people were just quiet and just listening to music. So I, I thought that was that was great. You know, right. you know, yeah. it was a great experience. I, I like. That. I think that that um, that part, that venue in general, just is a really good feeling for. Well, any I guess any kind of band, any kind of artist. Um, it just has every angle, every lighting situation, every. Uh, you know all the different rooms they have up there. The foundation room is amazing. I've been to, been there a couple times, and it's just it's one of those places where. Uh, you just uh, you just feel at home. You just feel cozy. You know what I mean? Exact. That's exactly right. And I think that's that's the reason I like performing there because yeah. it's just it gives you a feeling. I mean, it's it's funny you say that because that's what I told people. I said, look, this is kind of like inviting people to my living room. Yeah. You know, coming in and obviously a few more people than I can have in my living room. But you know, <laughs> it was uh, it was fun. I mean, people totally got it and they were just relaxed. You know, it, it it's a show, but it's it's more a, a very intimate setting, which yeah. I like. Yeah, it's it's just a I don't know. It's it's a cool little place. If you if if you haven't been there, if anybody's not been there, just you need to go check it out when when you can. But would you rather would you rather perform? Um, I mean, do you do you like performing in front of you know large crowds? I mean, obviously the the smaller crowds are more intimate. They're more you know they're more fun. But do you do you have a preference whether it's big or small? Well, I mean. Not really. I think I think um, I kind of like the smaller venues, kind of like uh, what we talked about, the House of Blues. But um, you know, I've, performing art centers are fine. You sure. know, a couple thousand people. I've done those venues, on the, they're great. You know, and obviously, as we go on and do more shows, you know, I'd be doing larger venues, and and those are fine too. You know, for what they are. Right. Um, right. You can't really see people. I mean, it's pretty dark. You can only see like the first few rows. But um, but I like connecting with the audience. I like to look at. I think I think the larger venues are fine. You know, and they're great. Uh, and obviously, at some point, you know, you move on to do larger venues. But um, but you can only see the first few rows. You know, sure. when you're in a larger venue. Um, and I like connecting with the audience. And I think that that's uh, I I get my energy from the audience, and uh, so um, again, larger venues are great. But yeah, we yeah. were talking about House of Blues, which you know, which is a, is a great venue. But I, I, I like to do both. I mean, main thing is to be up on stage and performing live. I mean, absolutely, I absolutely. Uh, your album uh, that's out now is Echoes of Love, but you have uh, was it three or four more? I have uh, three more. Uh, Echoes of Love was my fourth album. Okay. My first album, Opal Fire, came out in 2002. Free as a Bird came out in 2004. Uh, Secret Journey came out in 2007. And then this one came out last year, 2012. Okay. Okay. Very nice. And so you, um, now obviously, uh, what were you doing as far as like touring before, you know, before the Grammys? How... How have uh, things have, have obviously drastically changed? But let's you know let's let's move back to your to your early days when you were just starting out and you know you're trying to get out there, you're trying to do to your best to to get your music heard. What you know what was that like? I mean, I know that you know you you have to to push it and you have to be on the grind. But you know what was it like for you? Well, you know, I mean, are you, are you referring to? When I first started out, before I got signed to a recording contract, yes, yep, you're talking, yep. okay, at that time, yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was difficult because you know, first of all, um, at that time, you know, we didn't have the technology. You're talking about, uh, you know, over ten years ago. Sure. So that technology wasn't there. It wasn't as easy as it is today mm -hmm. to kind of go in and cut a demo and you know be in front of your computer and do some stuff it was it was more difficult 
Right. So at that time, I I'm I was very lucky. You know, I did some stuff on my own, and then what happened is I I got very lucky to run into a gentleman who who really uh, helped me uh, financially mm -hmm. to to cut a demo, and uh, that led into me getting a recording deal with Real Music. Wow, that's that's always a good thing whenever you. Uh... You know, you work so hard to get to a certain point. You're not really sure what's going to happen. You don't, you know, you have hopes and you have dreams, but you, there's really no way of knowing. And then when you finally bump into that person or meet that person or meet that, that company that wants to get behind you and move you forward and then doors just start opening and all of a sudden, you know, you just, you're exactly where you want to be. It's one of the, if not the best, one of the best feelings in the entire world. Yes. I mean... Obviously, you have to bring yourself up to a certain level sure. to, you know, for someone to take you on. But uh, at that point, you know, he uh, he's a cardiologist. Uh, he's a doctor, and uh, you know, and he he's an amazing person. He was like an angel. Yeah, he, he came and listened, you know, to my to a couple songs that I had. He's like, listen, go and cut a demo because I couldn't really afford making a demo on my own. Sure. And uh, so once he got behind it and we did the whole album, um, then I got signed. So wow. that's yeah, that's that's incredible, man. I just you know again going back to your bio, just seeing everything from from uh, you know from what I know about you is just you're one of those people where um, you you yourself are inspiration, and you uh, you know you you make people take a look at you and say this you know don't don't just throw away your dreams, don't you got to work hard for it, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that I take from this whole experience with you is just that, you know, you've worked hard for this. And, you know, if you, if you do that, um, you know, put in your due diligence, then good things happen. Yeah. I mean, I'd say, I'd say don't give up. I mean, I know it's a cliche and a lot of people tell you, Hey, don't give up on your dreams, but it's absolutely true. If you just keep it going, but you really have to believe deep down that you are good, that you got something, you know, yeah. you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you believe in yourself and, uh, you know, and you keep working, eventually somebody will see you and say, hey, man, you know, let, let me help you. Because, you know, I won a Grammy Award, but I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't do it on my own. There's a lot of people along the way that helped me sure. to be where I'm at. You know, and I and I really appreciate that. You yeah. you never you know I mean there's uh, a a bunch of people that came along the way, you know financially or musically or, you know just that emotional support uh, really been along the way that uh, got me to where I am today. So and I, I think a lot of people don't really realize that you know when somebody because you know when I was younger, <clears throat> before I really knew much about the Grammys and all that stuff, I just knew that people were winning awards. You know, you think that this person. You know, this person wrote a song and now they won an award. Well, that's kind of true, but that's not the whole story. I mean, it goes back to, you know, that those people that that helped you from day one. Um, that's you know, they they were there. They were believing in you. They were doing all this stuff for you and supporting you. To the person that signed you to the major label, it's all about uh, it's all about the team. It's all about everybody that got you to that that final point um, in getting that award. And then you know now you got to start it all over again. Now you got to do it all over to to go back there to the fifty sixth annual Grammy Awards next year and go back on that stage. Yes, yes, that's that's my you know. But you don't really think about that when you're in the studio, obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me uh, let me uh, write for the next year's Grammy. Right. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, yeah, but, that's. Uh, I don't. I don't know that that would. Uh, I don't think that would work too well if you were writing <laughs> to win a Grammy. I don't think that would work. Yeah. Um, you are actually. Uh, you're actually in the studio right right now, right? Recording a new album. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. For twenty. I am. I'm recording. Uh, like I told you a few minutes ago, I. What I'm doing is uh, writing uh, six new tracks. For this new album that will be coming out, uh, I'm thinking, you know, end of August, beginning of September of this year. Sure. And uh, five tracks will be taken from my previous four albums. Wow. So it's it's the best of, but at the same time, half of it is written, you know, new material. Sure. Absolutely. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's awesome. I, I am uh, I'm excited for you, man. That's, uh, I you know, it's, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even uh, express, I guess, what I'm, it, it's good. I really, uh, I'm really excited for you. 
Um, let, let, let me, let's see, where can we find you uh, online? Sure. Uh, my uh, website is omarmusic.com. And uh, from there, you can you know go to my Facebook page or, or Twitter or whatever. Sure. And uh, I mean, we were talking about House of Blues. Uh, I have a show coming up on April 6th. Nice. You know, nice. and uh, if, uh, of course, I'd love to see you there if you want to make it. Yeah. And, uh, and then if anybody, list, your listeners want to go, uh, please go to my website, omarmusic.com and you know, all the information is there. Definitely. And we'll be sharing that too on uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff as well. So we'll try to get some people out there for you. I would love to come. I, uh, I'm excited to see you play. Oh, man, that would be great. I mean, yeah. it would be great to see you. And, uh, yeah, just come on in. You, you'll see what I'm talking about when you see the show. Awesome. Well, I, that, I, I'm going to go see it. It's going to happen. So, man, I, you know, I appreciate it, man. I know we've had a uh, little bit of technical difficulties here coming up and through this. But I, I really appreciate you hanging out. And, um, you know, good luck with everything you're doing, man. Hey, thanks for inviting me on your show and I, I really appreciate it so looking forward to seeing you at the show absolutely man and you know if you got anything to share um ever just include me in your your twitter and all that stuff and i'll share it with everybody thanks a lot i appreciate all right it. man all right guys that my friends is an awesome awesome person grammy award winner omar akram akram go check him out go check his website out good stuff all right guys till next time i'm iraq peace 